and welcome back. And the first segment of this show, we kept it serious. So we had somebody talking about security from South Africa, and of course we had somebody talking about youth, Nigerian youth in the UK. So this segment onwards now is going to be entertainment. And my first guest is Fumbi. I'm going to tell you a bit about this guy. We went to Nigeria together. How many years ago, Fumbi? Okay. Maybe How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. I think it was, it was 2007. You know what I remember? Yes. Because it was for TA's show. Yes. And if you remember, that was the day Yaradua was sworn in. Really? Tuesday. It was a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday event. Right. And it was a public holiday in Nigeria that day. I remember it was 2007, but not because of that. Yeah, no, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I remember that date, you know. Ah. And that was your first performance in Nigeria. My first performance. Ever. My mm. first time back in Nigeria and my first performance. So it was two for the price of one. Two for the price of one. Now, and um, at the time, that was like the, the one of the premier comedy shows at the time. Yeah, it was at Mar um, Mar Live Mar and Naked Mar with Center. TA. Yeah, yes. at, at Muzon Center. Muzon Center, that's it. So... So, which is a good place to kick off this conversation. <laughs> 12 years later now. 12 years later. And I'm sure you're very familiar. Um, you've made a lot of inroads into the UK mm -hmm. comedy circuit. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you also keep an eye on what's happening Absolutely. on the Nigerian. Absolutely. So, how would you describe the change between then and now? Now, it's crazy because mm. of the corporate aspect of it. There's okay. money in exactly. Nigerian yeah. So, if I was a British comic, you go for the you know the new material nights yeah. and the clubs and whatnot. Yeah. You won't start making money unless you get real TV. Exactly. Yeah. In Nigeria, which you're getting to as well. Yes, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not in that category. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, in Nigeria, I envy the fact that you could do a glow tour, and you're making way more money than anybody in the UK mm. because there's so much corporate, because so much corporate interest Involve, in, in Nigerian yeah, comedy. Yeah, okay. But that affects the comedy. Okay, because you don't have. You can't to... talk about the sponsors. Mm. You have to be nice to the sponsors. Okay. You can't bite the hands that feed you. If you had to do that in the UK, would you? You don't want to be owned by sponsors. So mm. like a corporate gig, for instance, they okay. pay great money. Okay. Five thousand pounds for a one hour set. One offs. One offs. Okay. But that night <laughs> <laughs> Your hand hand and feet bound. <laughs> That night, mm. you earn that one thousand. You earn that money. Mm. They might not laugh. Mm. There was a comic who did uh, the PFA awards. Yes, he said um, he was doing in front of Alex Ferguson, Rio Ferdinand, Paul Scholes. He said he was. He said Ferguson had his back to him, talking to someone. And the, what are you gonna do? Say, <laughs> Sir, Sir, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Sir, Sir Alex. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> mm. So you have to pay that price. It's the same thing with the corporate Nigeria. You know, you have to play a game. Mm -hmm. Which affects the comedy because I think Nigeria is one of the places mm. that's ripe okay. for some kind of comedy to push the culture forward. Mm. Because through comedy, you can challenge thoughts and processes because it's all jest. Indeed, exactly. Yeah. So, like in America, the, yeah. the message is there subliminally. Subliminally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, but it's hidden in jest. Mm. And I think Nigeria is the best place for that. Because we're, right now, because of the situation. It's always been like that. Mm. You know, because Nigeria's got so much, it's so complex mm. that comedy is, for me, comedy is a It's a release. Through true pain as well. Mm. Through true pain comes great comedy. Mm. You see, when Nigerians, when you're living in, in, in Shomulu, for instance, mm. face me, I face you, there's mm. gutter outside. Mm. The creativity these kids have is doubled because they have nothing. Mm. So they become extra creative. And mm. I feel like we, like we miss that in the comedy. In the UK. In the UK and in the comedy industry in, in Nigeria. Mm. We miss the creativity of variation of comedy. Okay. So if, 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 what would be a perfect situation in terms of this corporate thing? What would be a perfect situation? Where would you limit them to? What I would like would to see would be like small comedy clubs. Okay. A place where Nigerians can actually literally go on stage. There's no corporate pressure, okay. a host, and someone gets to express himself through his words and his experiences. Mm. So it doesn't follow down the avenue of this is what the corporate people mm. want. So I have to do jokes like this. What if I'm doing jokes about the fact that we are poor and there's no lights, but I find the wittiness and the intelligence behind it mm. and deliver it through funny stories. Mm. And because I, I always, I always love it when Nigerians stick to the original. When I grew up in Nigeria, it was like I don't know yeah. if I said that properly. Of yes, course, of course, yeah. tales by moonlight, mm -hmm. you know, authentic stories, Indeed, true yeah. stories that reflected our culture and mm -hmm. what we were doing at the time. Mm -hmm. And I would like the comedy and, and to reflect that as well, mm -hmm. our culture and what we're doing at the time, because mm -hmm. that's more impactful. Indeed. And we need that. You live in the UK. Yes. And um and I know um we you deal with your issues as as you as in the as in black comedians yes. you deal with your issues in the UK yes how acceptive now has is the mainstream of black comics and black comedy in, in the, the UK? UK yeah um, it's it's interesting it, 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 we 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 we're in a hole I'm a first generation Brit. Mm. So on one surface, I'm British, they understand me, I've got the voice. Mm -hmm. On the second surface, my name is Oluwa from Adidijo Motayo, mm -hmm. which host mm -hmm. from Fernham. <laughs> <It's a mouthful. laughs> He's gonna see that and say, "Okay, I'm looking forward to this." You know, so, so, so that's still an issue. It's still it's an issue in the sense where we don't we don't fit in still. 
Mm. Black comedy is still seen as black comedy, as opposed to a British experience from a different... Uh, but will it, will it ever be seen beyond that, though? No. Is it possible? It can't be, because our stories are not... Unless I, play, unless I conform to a narrative of, I'm British, mm -hmm. and stay in that realm. But I can't because I have Nigerian parents, Indeed. I have Nigerian friends, cousins, you know, family, mm -hmm. and we have a story too. They want to hear my voice. Exactly. They want to hear about the things we talk about at home. Exactly. They want to see that on the television screen. Mm -hmm. So there is still an air of, I did a pilot last year for the BBC, mm -hmm. and there's still that air. This pilot was supposed to be made for the BBC and shown in Nigeria. That was the plan. I think, yeah. But it didn't get picked up, which is fine. But what I noticed was, once we set the ideas, we were the ideas guy, ideas people, and what the BBC will do would bring in white writers to channel that idea. Exactly. And I'm, I understand, I don't understand what they're trying to do, let me not lie. But what, <laughs> until we're given that freedom to mm. tell our own narratives, to write our own stories, what you have is what you see in terms of a more accepted version of mm. an experience. I want to create a, 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 a TV show where Yoruba is spoken. Because that's how my mom spoke to me. Mm. You understand? You understand? Yeah, and I want to hear, I, that's the authenticity of the character. Mm. I don't want my mom to be speaking that posh Nigerian accent. From me, dear, please bring me the conflicts so that an audience in Sheffield in the, can get it. No, I, I don't want that. I want the true experience of how we truly are mm. in our normal state, in our homes when mm. we're in Britain. Through the church, through wherever, I want that to be expressed. Has anything improved <coughs> in the last decade? A lot's improved. I see you, I see you, I see you on the big screen. You see I see on, you, I see you here and there. But the appearances. Is that index? Okay. They're not okay. platforms. Okay. We need platforms. Mm. And the appearance is Our own platforms. Our own platforms. What's we the biggest one writers. right now? None. Mm. And I don't know any platform, unless it's social media, unless you're building it through the social media. Mm. But in terms of TV and television and stuff, we're still going through the same channels, knocking on the same door. Do you mind if we come in as well, as opposed to, this is the vision. And, mm. and that's where we're at now. Through YouTube and stuff like that, you can create. Indeed. You can meet an audience, you know. If Nigeria had light and internet, the way the Nigerian videos use on internet... No, it's going to be ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Because you know how, you know us now. We've just been on YouTube every day. I tell all my friends in government, I say, look, you guys, the young people are not asking for much. No. Bring down the price of data mm. and watch miracles happen. Yeah. That's why I tell all of them. Yeah, I, I, that's what we tried to do with the, the pilot we made. I wanted to come from... And when I do comedy, I'm very aware of how people and Nigerians are seen. Mm. Since I walk onto the stage, I say my name is Fumbi. They expect bank detail jokes. They expect floor jokes. Immigration they jokes. Immigration jokes. They mm -hmm. expect ticket attendant jokes. Yeah, yeah. And a bunch of African accents. Mm -hmm. And I don't do that. Because... Deliberately. Yes. Because... Stereotype. I don't like it. Mm. I, I don't use the accent. Even when I'm doing my mom, I'll use an English accent. Simply. They've even had this, like, this Nigerian accent has evolved out of... This English Nigerian accent has yeah. evolved... I see in films now. Yes. I see in all kinds of presentation. I'm thinking, yes. where did this accent suddenly come from? Come from? And it's the accent that everybody wants to identify with, and it's, it's, it's it, it works. I get it. Nigerians are animated people. Mm. When we talk, it's, it's it kind of there's kind it's of. It's in the funny. blood. <laughs> but what they don't understand is there's 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 depths to people. Exactly. You understand when you're talking to your boys, you're not gonna use the same hello boy. You know, mm -hmm. Certain times you might say guys, or you might tone it down. Yeah, yeah. But they don't see the variation. Appreciate with it. <laughs> right, right. They don't see the variation. Exactly. Indeed, I was yeah. on the set one time, BBC production, and the producer, lovely guy. It was about football and mm -hmm. the hairstyles in football and the coloured boots. I wrote a nice little piece about that. He wrote a line that said, if my dad saw that hairstyle, he'll say, Fumbi, you like a fool, a big fool. I delivered the line just like that. He said, Fumbi, um, could you put the accent on, please? I said, nah. <laughs> I already started hearing, oh, God. So I said, okay, let me not cause trouble. I'll just do it in a basic yeah, yeah. tone. I said, Fumbi, you know, if my dad said, I said, Fumbi, you like a fool, a big fool. I came back and said, no, you know, how your dad talks. Mm -hmm. I said, my dad talks. <laughs> I said, have you met my dad? <laughs> Do you know how he talks? But he wanted to hey, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And at times, I, f I see that as buffoonery. It is. I don't particularly enjoy unless, some of those, yeah. Unless it's that character you're delivering. Exactly. But not everybody can represent that, that energy, that mm. buffoonery. I live in Nigeria. There's so many different I can imagine. variations yeah. of Nigerians that you see. That it's not even that even that one generic guy. Like I don't really see that person. Mm. You understand? And plus we're proud. So people mistaken that you know Nigerians wherever they are, security <laughs> guard to see you pride me. We're gonna carry ourselves in Indeed. a way of we are big. So people don't, don't misunderstand that, and that's why I try and capture a more rounded persona of a Nigerian. And we're gonna hopefully be getting a full pot of this. Yes. Come the fifth of November. Yes. And um, I'm looking forward to that actually, and it's gonna be at the backyard comedy club. 
Um, black and British. Yes, Black and British. It's Why the first that? club okay. I actually tried to, to do my to do comedy in. Ever? Yes, I had an argument with my mum. Is that, is that was, the symbolism of yeah, using it? Well, I was playing PlayStation too much. And she, you know how mummy comes in there. Mm -hmm. What I do, what oh, I do. Oh, <laughs> Exactly. Oh, come back in. So I just stormed out the house, went to the comedy. I'd never done comedy before. Said to the security guy, how do I go there? He said, have you performed before? I said, no. He said, you have to be known to get on here. I said, oh, okay. All right, thank you. I just walked off. So that's the story for this that's one. That's the story behind that, but... 15 odd years later, I'm, I'm back at the Backyard Comedy Club doing my live special, Black and Brit-ish, which okay. just is like you said, being black and being Brit with the okay. ish on it. Yeah. You know, that, I that yeah, hole yeah. I'm in of yeah. being a first generation Indeed. Brit, almost like a foster child, awesome. trying to, you know, find my voice in this place. Okay. Uh, how can we get tickets? Sir? Tickets on my profiles or social media on um, uh, on the Backyard Comic Club website. Okay. Or you can go on my socials. They're all on the link in my okay. bios. We're going to be our contribution to this event. Yes. From now to the end, that yes. day we'll be pushing it. I appreciate that. On the station it. and on our platform. That one is. And for me, personally, I'm looking forward to I would like really, to come. Uh, came me. to my first show now. No, 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 no. Trust me. Yes. And I'm bringing my damn for this one too. <laughs> you can bring my damn now. Fumbe. Yes. Always a, a pleasure. pleasure. Definitely. Well done. Definitely. Thank you very much. See, that was nice, short, and sweet, though. <laughs> Trust me. Nice British Nigerian interview. <laughs> no long term. <laughs> We're going to another break. And when we come back, Terry Apala is in the studio. Stay tuned. But people aren't sure now. You know, a lot of open racism going on. That's not cool. Go back to where you came from. You know, people panicking. This is not the Britain I grew up in. I'm like, it's the Britain I grew up in. <laughs> Where you guys been? You know? Too many times I've been told to go back to Africa. <laughs> I just thought they meant Peckham, you know? Because <laughs> nothing says Africa like Peckham, right? I was in Peckham the other day. I took a selfie, right? Put it on my Facebook. I had cousins back home calling me like, when did you get back? <laughs> we missed you. Different times in London. I question myself as well, you know, like, am I British? You know, because I've got an African name, so people don't see me as British straight away. And I was checking my Wikipedia page, because I do shit like that from time to time. <laughs> yeah, if you guys work hard and apply yourselves, you might have Wikipedia pages. You can check those. <laughs> just, just keep trying, people, keep trying. You know. So I'm checking my Wikipedia page, right? This is what it says on my Wikipedia page, right? It says, Fumbi Omotayo is a British based comedian. I said, oh, I'm British based. <laughs> so I checked Mo Farah's Wikipedia page, right? It said, Mo Farah is a British distance runner. I said, oh, he's a British distance runner. <laughs> he was born in Somalia. <laughs> I was born here. <laughs> and then I realized, you know, you have to earn the right to be British. It's not just given to you, you have to earn it, right? But here's the thing, you're British until you do something wrong. Right?